All right, guys, first things first, you want to disconnect your battery and remove it. Now, your battery terminals are held on by the battery terminals, of course, but a 10 millimeter nut. So that's all you want to do is loosen up that one and on the positive side, loosen up that one. And once you loosen that one up, right here, loosen it up, twist it, take it off. Do the negative first and make sure you put it to the side so it don't come back up and touch. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to see this, but way down there, there's a 13 millimeter nut. See right there? Oh, you're on the other side. No, no, I'm oh. down this on. I don't want to get in the way right there. But here, I'll put the wrench. I was looking at the one over here. Oh. Okay, I see it. Alright, now somebody already got this loosened up, but what you want to do is loosen that up, and that's going to loosen up that uh, bracket down there that holds down the battery. Take that up, take that up, and take your battery right out. Alright? We're back. All right, guys, you got the battery out. Everything is looking good. You are halfway done with this job. No, you're not. <laughs> All right, the next thing we're gonna do is disconnect our air temperature sensor right here. Now, to disconnect our air temperature sensor right here, there is a locking, that little red tab, that's a locking tab right there. We will need to back that up. And then, there's a little black tab right there. Squeeze that tab into the connector and unplug it. Put that down to the side. The next thing we're gonna do is gonna disconnect our computer. Now your computer is held on, is uh, you got two big plugs going onto the computer. Both, both uh, connectors are the exact same. Now what you want to do is, see right now if you pick this up, that is not supposed to happen. That's supposed to, that, that's broken. That is supposed to lock that in place. Like that, well from turning. So what you're supposed to do, yeah that's broken. You're supposed to push that little black tab down and then, let me go to this one right here. You're supposed to push that tab down and then bring the latch over and both it's going to unplug. Be very careful with, it, with this guys. Do not damage those little pins inside or you're going to have a serious problem. Now these connectors are different. You can see that the color color coded. This one brown, this one is gray, silver, white, or whatever you want to call it. So you can't confuse them up. Now, next thing we're going to do is take this 10 millimeter nut and you got to take that out because it's going to this little ground right here. Be careful, make sure you put that back when you um, put everything back together. All right, so uh, let's, um, let's get that bolt out and then we're going to remove the whole air cleaner assembly. All right, to get this air cleaner assembly out of the way, first thing you want to do is loosen up this clamp right here. Now, you can use a flat screwdriver or you can use a 5 16 And then you want to remove this 10 millimeter bolt right here. Let's remove that. Then, I'm going to just loosen this clamp up. Now, your air cleaner is going to be, there's going to be a grommet down below, maybe two grommets, that's holding this in place because it's not going to just come up easily. So, you want to take this, just loosen that up, take that, pull that back, just like that. And you want to firmly grasp the air cleaner, shake it, and pick it up. And when you pick it up, oh, it's got this, you got a hose right here too. This hose, instead of disconnecting it right here, disconnect it right here at the valve cover. So, just twist that back and forth to break it and if you get a, have a problem like that just take you a pair of pliers and just just twist it back and forth that's it just to break that seal and pull that off now up under the air cleaner well, it actually has three three posts and these three posts push down into these grommets right here. So that's what you be. I see one. Where was the other one? Yeah, one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Two. Okay. And over here is number three. Okay. 
All right, so now you're gonna put this down to the side. Do not put this outside because you do not want this computer out in the elements, especially if water getting here. It's gonna mess this computer up. So put it somewhere dry and um, you'll be okay, all right? All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove our battery tray. Now your battery tray is held on by four bolts and one nut. You're gonna have two 13 millimeter bolts, two 12 millimeter bolts, and one 13 millimeter nut. All right, let's get those out. Okay, we got all the bolts out and the one nut, and that's all you have to do is take your battery tray out and put this over to the side. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna do is we have to remove this, uh, take some antifreeze out of here, cause this got this whole assembly over here that we gotta remove out of the way. I'll show you that in a minute. So the easiest way of doing this is Taking this clamp off back there, well, not actually taking it off, just bringing that clamp back. Have a pan, a drain pan, up underneath. Bring that clamp way back. Bring it back to there because what ha what's going to happen is, just like that other hose, those get kind of the hoses get kind of seized up there. So we got to grab it and we got to twist it. And then carefully bring it out and let the antifreeze drain down into the pan. All right, let's let that drain out. All right, the majority of that is draining, but you got to be careful because there's still a lot in here because your thermostat is located in here. Now, the next thing we're going to do is going to move this air tube out of the side, out of the, to the side. We're going to take this off in a minute. You're going to have your upper radiator holes right here. And what you're going to do is take that clamp right there. Bring that clamp back, and the same thing with this upper hose. Twist it back and forth to try to break the seal. Now, if you get a hard one like this, see how the seal's not coming through? What you're going to do is get you a flat screwdriver, stick it in there to break that seal loose, and then you'll be able to take that hose off. So let's get that done. Take this off. Um, matter of fact, let me get a. Let me uh. Yeah, and just take that off. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove this air tube right here. Now to remove this air tube, if you follow it down to the throttle body, there is going to be a clamp down there. It's right there. All right, and just get you a short screwdriver, loosen that clamp up, and then you're gonna pull this hose right out of there. All right, let's get that out. All right, once you've got the clamp loose, you should be able to just twist this, pull this right out of the way, put that to the side. The next thing we're gonna do is remove our shifting cable along with this bracket. Now you're gonna have two 13 millimeter nuts up under here, but you're not gonna do those yet. First you're gonna do is disconnect it from over here. And what you're gonna do is take that off. This will drop down, put your nut back on it so you don't lose it. The reason why you did that first is so now you can swing this side to side and get those two 13 millimeter bolts out here. Don't drop the bolt like I did, and then you can move that right out of the way. All right, the next thing we do is ready to remove this water outlet housing. Now, first of all, you're going to have a coolant sensor up here. To disconnect this coolant sensor, you're going to take that tab, squeeze it into the connector, and then pick up. So squeeze it in and pick up, that's to the side. Now you're gonna have two hoses over here that's going to your heater core. Now, you can mark them if you want so you can put them back in place, but if you look at it, this hose is longer. This over, the, the outlet housing over here is further back than this one up here, and this one is short, so you can pretty much get that on. Just take a picture of it. So just take your pliers, bring both clamps back, and while you got it, take your pliers and just twist it a little bit to break that seal on it. And you want to get your pan just in case there's a little more antifreeze coming in, and more, more, more than likely there is. All right, so let's pull this back and get those two hoses off of there. All right, guys, we're going to be ready to remove this out. But first, what we're going to do is, you see this hose that's going all around here? This hose, just follow this hose down, guys. And it's going to go down here to this little diverter valve right here. And that's what you do. Just twist that and pop that off. Just 
just like that. Yeah, yeah just like that. Son of a biscuit. Oh, yeah. When it gets like that, let's get this little prime on here to help pop that off. And let's swing this over to the side. All right, get out of the shifter cable. Let's put that over to the side. And now, you got three 10 millimeter bolts. One, two, and number three. Hopefully there's- Wait, wait, oh, okay, I see it. Hopefully there's not nothing underneath. <laughs> so uh, let's get those three uh, bolts out, and hopefully this will come right out. All right, we got the three bolts out. It's loose. But I think the part down there must go into the block or the head or something, like a grommet or something. So I'm gonna twist it and back out. What the heck was that dropped? It hit the ground. Yeah, it goes. Dang, I'm dropping the bolts out of this thing. Maybe it was a bolt because I'm missing one bolt and I just dropped one of them. Oh no, here's the bolts. Alright guys, what I gotta do is go up under there now. Let me see if our bolts are the same length. These two. Okay, all three are the same length. Let's take our whole assembly out. Put this to the side and then I'm going up under. Yeah, we got the O-ring right there. So that's what it set into. Um, maybe it was one of my tools. Let me go up under there and see what dropped out. All right, guys, it was a thermostat that dropped. Um, the thermostat on this car, don't put it in like this. It goes like that. And then there's an alignment up there. So we can actually just stick this back in there just like that. We're going to be replacing that as well. And take out three bolts, and we're going to put that with this, and we're going to put this to the side. All right, guys, let's start over here from the side. We got our camshaft, crankshaft positioning sensor here. Now, to disconnect this sensor, there is a, it's kind of, the lighting sucks. There is a tab on the top. You're going to squeeze that tab into the connector and back up on the plug. Okay, bring that around. Now we have our neutral safety switch. Same thing. You're gonna squeeze that tab in and back up on the plug. Just like that. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have two 15 millimeter, this thing's going dead, that's one. Oh, two 15 millimeter bolts that holds in the starter. One, and then further down, we got one right there. Now we're not going to remove the starter, that's all you're going to do is take those bolts out and just push that starter back and let it stay up on the side of the engine. Alright, so let's get those bolts and we'll be right back. Alright, your starter should be loose, push that to the side. Your two bolts, you should be able to slide them right out. Both bolts are the same length. Okay, that's out of the way. You can remove this bracket if you want, but this bracket is bolted to the block, it's not even attached to that but uh if you want to you can remove it you got your 13 millimeter here and then take off your two bolts 10 millimeters to the throttle body or if you want just remove your thought take off the four bolts and remove your throttle body all together all right let's put that to the side the next thing we're going to do is we got to get to this bracket over here and get this out of the way now to get to this bracket we have a 10 mil a 13 millimeter bolt right here what right here Oh, okay. One right here, and then we have a 13 millimeter nut up here, and then we got one up under here, which we're about to get to. Now you're gonna have your wiring harness going, these uh, connectors, not connectors, but just the retainers to hold the harness to the side. They just pop right up. You could just take a screwdriver or something and pop those up, get them out of the way. Then you're gonna have your power distribution box right here. Now, to pick this up, you're going to have three tabs. You're going to have one right here, one right here, and then the other one's going to be over here. Now, what you want to do is take the tab, you want to push this tab away from the box, and just 
pick up on it. And while that one's held in place, then you want to go to the next one, and then the next one. Pick that up, push that over to the side, then you're going to have this little shield here. That you have to, this shield will just come right up, but it's, it's held on by a Christmas tree clip. This harness right here. Get that out of the way, and get your body panel pry bar. that out of the way. These three prongs up here, the three tabs, the thing will slide off of that and get that out of the way because you got this 13 millimeter nut right there. So let's get those three out and once again you got a 13 millimeter nut here, a nut here, and the bolt down there. Alright, let's get those out. Alright, your bracket is going to be kind of loose, but I did forget to take off this clip right over here. Now you can either pull, you can either pull those two arrows together and push it out, or on the back side, just pop that little clip open, and it'll open that up and take that up like that. Alright, we got this out. Now what we're going to do is, so you don't lose your bolts or nuts, put your nuts and bolts back where they belong. Alright, put those back. And let's go put this to the side. Hey guys, for the next step, you want to take your hydraulic jack with a block of wood on it. And you want to put it up under the transmission pan. Can you see up in there? Mm -hmm. Alright, and you just want to come back up. And you want to watch this mount right here. And what you want to do is jack it up till you just see this part pick up. Just like that. Let's take the tension off of that. Because now what we're going to do is take that bracket out of there. Now to take this bracket out of here, first you're going to have a nut and a bolt that go through here. This is a 17 millimeter, and there's a nut on the other side that's an 18 millimeter. And then you're going to remove three 18 millimeter bolts. One, two, and the other one is way over here. You're going to see that on the side. All right, and then this whole bracket is going to come out, and the mount is going to stay in place. All right, let's get those taken out. All right, we got the nut and bolt. We got two of the bolts right here. And here's the third one. And we take that bracket right up. That is cool, man. That will stay all in place. Now, you can put the bolts back in there, but you don't want this thing being in the way when you're dropping that transmission down. So, I'm just going to put these into here. Cut the bolts with them and put them together. And let's go put this to the side. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, guys, is remove the two top uh, transmission uh, bell housing bolts. You got a 13 millimeter here, and then on the other side, you have one here, but it's going in the opposite way. Now, you, if you want, you can remove this heat shield, or what you can do is grab your deep 13 millimeter, uh, 3 8 drive, and you can, come on, I'm gonna, that mic is in my way a little bit. this side and and of course I got the ratchet on tightening okay it can go right there and be very careful this guys because you're not you're, you're using it can easily slip off so you want to be careful and just like I said slip off um I'm going to try this one more time. And a good idea, guys, you can actually use a half inch, which will hold on a lot better. It'll be tight putting on, but it will hold on a lot better. Matter of fact, let me get a half inch uh, deep. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I got a half inch. And let's go over here and try to fit this. Now, remember, the half inch is going to be a little tight going on there. But it will hold on a lot better. All right, let's try that. Let's try the half inch. There we go. I don't know if you can see the end of this turning. Yeah. All right, guys, let's get that bolt out and this one out. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove this dipstick tube right here. Well, it's not a dipstick in it, but the tube. And it's gonna be a bracket that's going across here, and there's gonna be a T30 Torx bolt screw right 
there. Right there. Then we're going to take out. But before you take this out, let me just loosen that up. You're going to have to drain the fluid out. Now, let me go up. Let's go up under here and I'm going to show you how you're going to do that. You want me to do it? Uh, how far you got to go? Here's the pan right here. Oh, okay. I got it. All right. Here's your transmission pan. Um, what you're going to do is got a series of 10 millimeter bolts. You want to have your drain pan up under here. Start from over here. Take out these, all these bolts. And then start loosening up these. Once you loosen those up, this pan, side of the pan is going to drop down. And all the fluid is going to go into it. And then you're going to take out the rest of them. Let the fluid drain down for about 5 minutes. And then put that pan back up. Now once you get that, come on back and watch the video. All right, we got that drained out, and my bad, there's two T30 uh, bolts or screws. There's one right here that's going in through this way, and you file the two down. There's going to be one right there. All right, you're probably going to use a long extension to get that one. All right, so let's get both of those out of there. All right, guys, we got both screws out, both of them are the same length, and that's all you have to do is just wiggle the shifter back and forth and pick it right up. All right. And this is a good idea to put your bolts back in there so we know where they went. All right, let's get those back in. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is disconnect the transmission cooling lines. We've got the cooling lines right here. Now, somebody had marked this already. I did not mark this. So they marked this one to the top. But just remember, the gray one goes to the top, the black one goes to the bottom. Now, there's a cover right here. And what you're going to do is just take your hands and pop that cover back on both of them. You might get a screwdriver for that one. And then there's a clip inside there. So what you want to do is get you a pick. And be careful of losing that clip in there. There's actually two ways of doing this. One, you can get the clip in there somehow. And get that clip out of there. This is a... This sucks. I'll tell you what. Let's get this one. And there's this is coming out. Son of a biscuit. He's on thinner. I'm telling you what I need. All right. Maybe great. Look at here. Alright, once you pop that out a little bit, then you can take it. You want to be careful these things will spring out and pop out of you. Like that? Biscuit. <laughs> Alright. Uh that's got to suck. That thing is down there somewhere. We'll find it somewhere. But then what you get once you get that clip out, all what you can do is just take this and unscrew that and get get put them in like that. Now once you get that clip out, just push it out just like that. All right. So ugh, let me get the let me find that I clip. I thought the floor was clear. Or green was it? Yeah. So green? this thing, this yeah, this transmission is just completely yeah burnt up. All right, let's get that one out, and let me go find that thing. All right. All right, we got both clips out. I did find the one, and I actually dropped both of them. Now, it's a good idea to put these back in there, and that's all you have to do is just push that on, and it will clip right into place. Just like that. So in that way, when you're ready, because your hoses are made, if you can see right there, it's not flat. It like curves up the line right there, curves upward. So when you push it in there, that because of the way that curves, it's going to open that clip up and then snap right back into place. So we got that. Uh, shape. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. All right, so let me get this. Other one in, and then we're going to move on to the next step. Alright guys, this next step, there's two ways of doing this. And I do recommend you doing it this way. I want you to go down to Harbor Freight, get this engine support bar. 
the item number is nine six five two four um, I think it was like 50 something dollars at the time, 59, something like that. Definitely want to get something like this. Because what this is going to do is I'm going to have my chain hooked up and I'm going to be holding up the engine from right here because you got to remove the support bar underneath. And it will also allow me to lower this engine down so we can easily take out this transmission. The other way of doing it is getting a hydraulic jack with a piece of wood, putting it up under the oil pan and doing it. But see, that way, um, then you got something in your way if you're up under there and you're trying to work around you got something in your way this way you're you're free to move around all right so i got my setup and i got a chain on each of the bolts going to the back of the cylinder head where we took out that water outlet housing um in this way two chains i got one right here that i can i can hook this one up right here let me see yeah i'm gonna go over here go to this one hook that one up and then I can go over here to hook this one up. So pretty much when I go to pick this up, I'm hoping both of them will have the same amount of tension. It looks like this one's going to have a little bit more tension. So maybe what I'll do is lower this down a little bit and bring this one over here. And what I want to do here is pick this up. I'm gonna put a little tension on it. All right, once I got tension on it, what I'm gonna do is you have a mount down here. That mount way down there. What I'm gonna do right now is take out this nut and bolt that's going right across from it. And there's a, let me, let me get the sizes so I can show you the size, so I can tell you the sizes. All right guys, before we get to that, so we can get this wiring harness ready, let's unplug this sensor right here. So that's what you do is take the tab, squeeze it into the connector, and unplug. Just like that. Put this, so we can get this to the side so we can get a, a better angle of what's going on. Okay, now let's switch to the other side. And for that nut and bolt, you're gonna need a 17 millimeter. So it's a 17 millimeter on the opposite side. So you're just going to get your wrench and hold that in place and take that nut right out of it. Make sure you got tension in there. Bolt? Huh? Take the bolt out? Yeah, take the bolt out. Make sure you got tension on that engine because if not, it's going to be very difficult to take out. All right, let's take that out. All right, guys. Uh, my bad. The nut on the other side is welded onto the bracket. So we ain't going to worry about that. And this side is a 16 millimeter. All right, that's one bolt out. Now, in the back, there's another one, but that one, let me see if I can reach back there and see this. Let me get this thing out of the way. All right. If you can see, you see the nut right there. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's, how, that's got a little thing on it so that nut won't come off so we just got to take off the nut on the other side now we could do this from the bottom as well but I'm figuring you know we're, we're, we're up here already might as well just get that out get that out of the way yeah, this is holding up um, and let me see what size that one is is that a 16 millimeter as well Nope, that is a 16 as well. So let's get that bolt out of there and we'll be ready to go up underneath. Be right back. All right guys, we got that bolt. <laughs> okay, we got that bolt out. Uh, let me see the one we took off on the front. All right, both of them are the same, so we can put both of those together. 
Now the next thing we're going to do guys is jack up the car, secure it, and remove the axles. We are not going to do that on this video. Check out the description below and you're going to see a link to us on how to remove the axles on this vehicle. And once you check that video, come back and we'll be ready to take this transmission right out of here. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. We got the axles out. What the heck, man? Dang it. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we have a cross member right up under here. This bar that goes all the way across. Now this bar is held on by an 18 millimeter bolt over here. And on this side, there's two 15 millimeter bolts. And it's going, it's got the mount going to it, but we took that bolt, that nut and bolt, that bolt out of the top for the mount. So we should be able to just take those three bolts out and the whole thing will come right out. So let's get those bolts out. All right, we just got one more bolt over here. And we take that down. And there's our mount. So check your mount. If your mount is busted right there, it's a good time, definitely a good time to replace it. Now what we're gonna do is take our bolts and put them back into place. Now, when we come back, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I'm doing. This is, this is so bogus mess man all right when we come back we're going to be on the opposite side so you can see the bolts and all we have to get to the front all right right back all right guys this bracket that's over here on the right side of the transmission we already took out the bolt going through it from the top now we're going to remove the three bolts to take off this bracket now again I got my engine support up there, so I'm not worried about anything. If you don't have that, have your hydraulic jack with a block of wood up under this oil pan. This is what I mean. If I had it right now, right now it would be all in my way. I'd be very uncomfortable. So that's why you go there and get one. So let's get those three bolts out of there and get that bracket out. All right. Got the last bolt out. Just got to get it off of that mount. And the bracket will come out and if you want put the bracket to the side just stick the bolts inside of them all right let's go put this to the side all right the next thing we're going to do is remove the torque converter bolts and what you want to get you a flat screwdriver and you're going to have a little cover right here just going to pop that cover out of there and can you see in there mm -hmm. you see absolutely nothing there's something in there that's the flywheel. Oh. So what you want to do is up here is the harmonic balancer. You want to get you a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter socket, half inch drive. Get you a half inch drive ratchet. And you want to set that going clockwise after you're tightening it up. Now, as you're turning this, you're going to be turning down here. So, now as I turn this, you see the, you see the flywheel turning? Mm -hmm. All right, you want to keep on turning till you one. get one nut right there. Now, bolt, what you want, and what you want to do is, now these, these, the holes on these is offset. So what you want to do is mark where you're at now. Don't mark the bolt, of course. Mark where the flywheel is, and mark where the converter is. Stick the stick in there and mark there. So you know exactly where it's supposed to line up at. Then you want to get that bolt off of there. And this bolt is a, looks like a 15 millimeter. Oh, I got here then. Scratch that, scratch that. Edit that part out. This part is a 16... No, no, scratch that. Edit that part out too. Alright, I'll make a note of that. Son of a biscuit, man. This bolt is a 17 millimeter. This socket suck. This is worn out. I don't know if you guys can see it. If y'all pay very close attention to this socket, this socket comes up and as it gets to the top, it it bowls out. Oh yeah, I see it. <laughs> this is a Mac hole. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so don't use this. Get you, get you a 17 millimeter good socket and with a ratchet, get your cordless ratchet. Let me see, wait a minute, what do I got here? Oh no, I got a 16 over here. Oh, what am I saying? Wait, 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 wait. Oh my god, how disorganized. <laughs> Alright, all right, here we go. Now, if you're using a regular ratchet, what you want to do is put the ratchet in there and hold 
the crankshaft bolt. He really just took his arm and found my. And then loosen that up. Okay, let me turn that back a little bit. All right, once I got that loose, then go in there and take that bolt out. Then you're gonna continue around to the next one until all of them are out. All right, let's get that done. All right, guys, we got all the bolts out. You're gonna there's gonna be four of them. If you mis misplace these bolts or you lose one, do not use a regular bolt because it won't work. These bolts have a flat head for a reason because there's very uh, small clearance between the flywheel and the back of the engine. You use a regular bolt, it will hit and lock this engine up, and you're gonna think you got a bad engine. So All right. can you get a replacement? Yes, you definitely get that. Now the next thing we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna have to get a light to show you this, guys. Um, well, you can actually see these two bolts. Yep. 13 millimeter. Now follow these bolts around. If you follow around, there's gonna be one way up here, but behind the oil filter. Oops, sorry. Let me, get, let me get light. No, I see it. Oh, you see that one? Wait, oh. I think you're... Wait, what about the wait, one right wait. there? Yeah, yeah, but this one's starting from the top. Oh, we're starting from the top. Yeah. Hold on. It's... I only got a little small section between the... Okay, I got it. That one, and then you're going to go around. Two. Three. Four. Five. And way up here is number six. And the two on the top, you already got out. Now, once you take these bolts out, this transmission is going to be ready to come out. All right? So, so it uh, fall on somebody's head? No, nah, it, sh it should hold in place. I don't know. Okay. Just stay up from under it. But what you want to do is we're going to take out, start from taking out the top ones first. Take them all out and down to the bottom two and just leave, leave these two in just loose and then have your jack ready. All right, so let's get those out, loosen these up and go get our transmission jack. All right, guys, got my uh, transmission jack. This thing is ancient, man. I got it from Harbor Freight years and years and years ago. Now, um... I would like for you to have some plywood down here, or in this case, you can use particle board down here so the jack can roll on. I don't have that, so I'm going the cheap way out, and this got some nice thick cardboard, and it'll, it'll serve just as good. Now, you definitely, unless you're going to have two people doing this, you definitely want to have one of these jacks, and this jack is cool because you, you got arms, and you can see I can tilt it whichever way I need it to go on, and it's got the hooks. To go on. Now, actually, what I'm supposed to do is have a long chain and hook it up over here, and then the chain goes around the transmission and just lock into here, and that's so the transmission don't drop off. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm laughing because I had that happen, man. The transmission came right off the jack. <laughs> Ooh, the converter fell out. It was fluid everywhere. All right, so let's stop playing around. Let's get this thing jacked up. And you guys like, yo, that is bad. Yeah, buddy. Look at that right there. Now, since I got that out. Now, I didn't take out all the bolts on the converter <coughs> because um, they're different sizes. So what I'm going to do is start from this side and I'm going to show you guys. Now we still didn't take out these two right here. So the one way up on the top is that long. Wait, okay. Number two going down is like that. So the top one is long. So if you want, you can mark them and start from the side. I put a little dot on it, one and two. And then um, over here, these two looks like the same size. This one is short also and then we go up to this one right here so this is good so out of them the ones on the top on each side are long and then it goes to the short and let me see one of these right here let me get one of those out and i said as before i loosened those up but now it's time to take those out
okay and these are short as well that's cool and i already see my transmission starting to separate and actually it just came down and it's rested right up oh man we forgot something all right i'm gonna take this out but when we come back guys what i want you to do is uh meet me on the other side because we got a plug a harness that's going to the back of the transmission that i forgot to take off all right so let's get this one out and i'll meet you on the other side all right we got this big plug right here guys we got disconnect now to take this off there is a little tab right here on this connector you see that little tab right there mm -hmm. you got to squeeze that in while you're holding it in the gray part is going to start turning counterclockwise okay and as it turns let's get to a point where you can unplug it okay and plug it now putting this back in as you can see the alignment you have that little cutout right there and it matches lines up with the cutout right there so you got that get that to the side now we are ready um now what we're gonna do now is we gotta figure out what the best way of doing this do we do we leave the engine right there do we lower it down oh wait a minute we got a little christmas tree harness right here plug that off to the side so what i'm gonna do first is well let's think about it while i change the battery all right right back <laughs> all right guys the top of it is actually a part down here it's holding in i'm gonna take my pry bar and stick it try to get it between here sure how I want to play this. Let me go down a little bit. You know, sometimes you just make you want to manhandle this stuff and just, just take the thing out. Dang it. Let me get behind here and see. Kidding me? You know what it's hanging up on? The no. uh, what if I? If I'm, I'm going to, right now, guys. I'm lowering the engine down. That ain't done. I'm 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 stuck on the mount. I gotta take the mount. Uh, the rear trans the rear transmission. This is some bull. And the suck part about it, the engine is backed up. So, and those bolts are going to be ridiculous to get to. You know, I would figure, I figured it was going to be able to drop enough and get out of there, but it's not going to do that. Nope, it's definitely not going to do it. All right, so let's. Uh, that's almost impossible to get out. All right, let's get this mount out. Now, up under here, there is the, uh, we go, let's go to the other side. Bear back. All right, guys, let me show you here. Up here, we got one 
bolt right there and one right on the other side, man. You can see how close that is. So, so I can I can get a 15 millimeter wrench in there. Got that one. Yep, and I'm able to reach that one. And hopefully those bolts are short. <laughs> no, enough to get out there. Then we're gonna go to the top and take out the other two. All right, I'll be right back. All right, we got the two bolts down there. Now we got the two 16 millimeters up here. And hopefully that mount will come right out now. Now that should give us enough clearance to get that out. I, they should have just made that slotted. So then you just loosen those two bolts up and pick it up. No, they had to do this. So let me put this to the side with the two bolts. And matter of fact, you might can see it up there. Okay, let's see now if we got any luck. How's it looking up there? Good. I don't know. Hey. You're right about that. Oh. What does that mean? We saw a drop. Oh. Guys, this is why it's so important to have a transmission jack. Dropping a little bit at a time because I want to make sure. Uh, if you see anything hanging up there, let me know. But so far down here, everything looks good. What about up there? Um, I think there's a hose up here that I can't tell if it's disconnected or not. This one? Yeah. yeah it's the breather. Oh, okay. The vent. All right, all right. So come down to the side now, to the front of the vehicle, and we'll watch this. Come down together. 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 Okay, Zibby. I don't know what that meant. It means together. What the heck is it supposed to mean? Why, why say it so many times? Because it's, it's me, you, and them. Oh. Got it. Looks like it's still okay, You know, good thing you got this car high enough. That sucked. Let's get you. That's why you're supposed to chain it. Yeah. That's why you're supposed to chain it. Man, that sucks. That's as low as it goes. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Ah! That's what sucks. What you gonna do? 
I guess you gotta jack up the vehicle a bit more. And jack up the vehicle more. Then don't. Leave it right there. Rebuild it right there. You gotta remember. You rebuild it right there you and you put it right back up. When you wear that star, you improvise. So, how do we improvise this? What we do is... Take a little jack and drag it out? <laughs> nope. Turn the transmission this way and slide it out over here. Lesson learned, guys. Make sure. Make sure your car is really high. Yeah. That thing will fall right off, and I'm going to be recording that. Now she blows, she about to Okay. Like Tim, what the heck is he doing? That's why you should be on wood. Yes! That's exactly why you should be on wood. See this? You see that? That's because he's on cardboard. <laughs> wow. Jeez. Told you, told you. This is astral. I this would have gotten on your case over here pushing on the bumper, the bottom part of your bumper. Or the bumper. But since it's already broken, I'll leave it alone. I'm over here having a hard time. That's with not the transmission. Problem. Okay. So why were you turning? What was I doing? During the tilt more, because all oh. the weight was going that way. I see. So let's get this out of the way. Slide the transmission. This is why it's important to have jack stand. I mean the chain up here. Alright, there you go guys. How to remove the transmission out of a 2011 Jeep Patriot with the 2.0 engine. Now stay tuned for the videos coming up of us rebuilding this to see what the heck happened. What the heck is going on. Right Harley? Harley. Yeah, buddy.